if we compare the pK values of our functional groups in an amino acid to that of a regular organic molecule, such as the carboxylic acid functional group of acetic acid and the carboxylic acid functional group of glycine. For acetic acid, the pK of this carboxyl group is around 4.8. But in the case of glycine, it's actually lower. So what does this mean? Which of these two will have a higher tendency to give off its proton? It's the one from glycine, right? Why is this the case? The carboxyl group of glycine has a higher tendency to give off its proton than that of acetic acid because of the positive charge from this amino group. So the amino group tends to push away the proton. So the proton prefers to leave the carboxyl group because of this positive charge. At the same time, in the resulting molecule, the two oppositely charged functional groups stabilize each other. That is why you have a lower pK value for the carboxyl group of an amino acid, so any amino acid, compared to the carboxyl group of a simple organic molecule such as acetic acid. That is why in the titration curve of glycine, the first pK value is lower than that of an organic carboxyl functional group. Now looking at the amine group, so we can compare the pK for a regular organic amine, such as methylamine, and the amine group of our amino acid. So again, we see that the amino group, the pK for the amino group of an amino acid is lower than that of the pK for methylamine. So pK for the amino group of methylamine is around 10.6, while that for glycine is 9.60. This means that there is a higher tendency for the proton of the amino group in the amino acid to dissociate than the proton from methylamine. Why is this so? It's because we have the electronegative oxygen atoms from the carboxyl group that pulls the electrons away from the amino group. And because of this pulling effect, there is a tendency for the proton to leave the amino group. So the pK value is lowered.